Coming up on 5-Minute News. UK starts virus campaign with a shot watched around the world. UK and EU leaders meet tonight amid Brexit no-deal signals. And Flyers Group challenges FAA approval of Boeing 737 MAX. It's Wednesday, December 9. I'm Anthony Davis. A nurse rolled up 90-year-old Margaret Keenan's sleeve and administered a shot viewed around the world, the first jab in the UK's COVID-19 vaccination programme, kicking off an unprecedented global effort to try to end a pandemic that has killed one and a half million people. Keenan, a retired shop clerk from Northern Ireland who celebrates her birthday next week, was at the front of the line at University Hospital Coventry to receive the vaccine that was approved by British regulators last week. The UK is the first Western country to deliver a broadly tested and independently reviewed vaccine to the general public. The COVID-19 shot was developed by US drug maker Pfizer and Germany's BioNTech. US and European Union regulators may approve it in the coming days or weeks. The second injection, in a fitting bit of drama, went to an 81-year-old man named William Shakespeare from Warwickshire, the county where the bard was born. The fanfare was good cheer to the nation, if but for a moment. Authorities warned that the vaccination campaign would take many months, meaning painful restrictions that have disrupted daily life and punished the economy are likely to continue until spring. The UK has seen over 61,000 deaths in the pandemic, more than any other country in Europe, and has recorded more than 1.7 million confirmed cases. Britain's programme is likely to provide lessons for other countries as they prepare for the unprecedented task of vaccinating billions. New results on a possible vaccine from Oxford University and drug maker AstraZeneca suggest it is safe and about 70% effective, according to early test results from Britain and Brazil. But that report in the medical journal Lancet showed that questions remain about how well it helps protect those over 55. The leaders of Britain and the European Commission will make a last-minute push for a post-Brexit UK-EU trade deal over dinner tonight, with both sides warning that the chance of reaching agreement by a year-end deadline is slipping away. With just over three weeks until an economic rupture that threatens upheaval for businesses on both sides of the English Channel, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen tweeted she looked forward to welcoming UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson to Brussels on Wednesday evening. Johnson's office confirmed the two leaders would hold a dinner meeting to continue discussions on the future relationship between the UK and the EU. The warm words masked a deep political divide between Britain and the EU over what their relationship will look like once a post-Brexit transition period ends on December 31st. Johnson and von der Leyen, head of the EU's executive arm, spoke by phone on Monday to take stock of trade talks that have ground to a halt after months of tense negotiations. The two leaders said afterwards that significant differences remained on three key issues – fishing rights, fair competition rules and the governance of future disputes. Johnson said on Tuesday the situation at the moment is very tricky, though he added that hope springs eternal. German European Affairs Minister Michael Roth, whose country currently holds the UK's rotating presidency, said we are really in a very difficult situation. The UK left the EU on January 31st after 47 years of membership, but remains within the bloc's tariff-free single market and customs union until the end of the year. Failure to secure a trade deal would mean tariffs and other barriers that would hurt both sides, although most economists think the British economy would take a greater hit because the UK does almost half of its trade with the bloc. There was a breakthrough in one area, as the two sides announced they'd reached agreement on how trade will work with Northern Ireland, the only part of the UK that shares a land border with the EU. 
The Brexit divorce agreement struck by the two sides last year contains specific provisions for Northern Ireland to ensure there are no customs checks or other trade barriers along the border with EU member state Ireland. The meeting between Johnson and von der Leyen comes on the eve of a two-day summit in Brussels starting on Thursday, one the EU hopes will not be overshadowed by Brexit. A Flyers advocacy group has challenged the Federal Aviation Administration's decision to lift the March 2019 order grounding the Boeing 737 MAX airliner after two fatal crashes in five months that killed 346 people. Flyers' rights and a group of flyers said on Tuesday they had appealed the FAA's November 18 decision allowing flights to resume to the US Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. Paul Hudson, president of FlyersRights.org, said the FAA and Boeing declared the MAX safe based on secret data and secret testing that is clearly legally inadequate. Hudson and some Democratic lawmakers have demanded the FAA disclose more underlying data in its review. The group is separately trying to force the FAA under the Freedom of Information Act to turn over documents relating to the 737 MAX technical fixes and testing. The FAA is requiring a series of software changes and new pilot training requirements before planes can return to service. The FAA has also approved an American Airlines training plan for pilots to resume 737 MAX flights, the agency and airline confirmed. That approval clears the way for American to resume MAX flights starting December 29th once it completes required tests and software upgrades to parked planes. American plans to begin with a single daily MAX flight from Miami to New York's LaGuardia Airport. That will mark the return of the MAX to U.S. commercial service. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app, ask your smart speaker, or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate, and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health, and climate, delivering independent, unbiased, and essential world news daily.